Jax asked me about building card houses. He wants to know about building the best and most amazing card house. Now, Jax is a really good card house builder. I've seen some of the pictures he shared on my Facebook page. So hopefully I'll give you something new, Jax. But in the meantime, why don't we talk about building a card house for everybody else who hasn't done it before. Basically what you do is you start with some playing cards and you put them together. Uh, and you lean them up against each other in a triangle or in science, we like to call that an apex. Let's take a closer look. Camera two. Nope, that's not camera two. Camera two. Uh-oh, that's, I don't even know what that is. Camera two. There we go. They fell over, but I'll put them back up. Here we go. Hi, camera two. Okay, so you put them together in an apex, and then you put another apex right beside the first apex. Like that. And then you put a roof on them, like this. And there you go. Then what you want to do, this is the tricky part. You do the second layer. Put an apex up here, and whoa, careful. And there you go, it's a card house. Camera one, there you go. So you could, if you wanted to, you could add another one here, and then make a second layer, and then put that on top of this, and make a third layer, or however many you wanna do. And if you do it right, check this out, camera three. Whoa, that's not camera three, hold on. There we go, camera three. Look at all the room I have over here. Eventually, your card house will look like this. There you go, see? One layer, two layers, three layers. But, camera one. But, there's a way to make it easier on yourself for building a card house. And it all has to come, it all has to do with science and specifically friction. Because cards, especially like very expensive or very new cards, have very low friction surfaces. They're very smooth on the top of the card, which gets very difficult when you're building that second layer or third or fourth, because you have to build it on top of the card. Wait, let's go back to camera two so you can get a closer look. You're building it on top of the card and it works like an ice rink. These cards the, tend to slide right out and it makes it very frustrating to build your card house. So, I will show you how to scientifically modify your cards to make them easier to build a card house with. I use a very um, sophisticated scientific instrument called a rock. Yeah, so this is what you do. Um, like a cheaper deck of cards is actually better because they don't have a, a really nice shiny surface and you also wanna use a cheaper deck of cards because you're gonna be taking a rock to them. You're not gonna be really damaging the cards, you're just gonna be making them look worn because older cards, cards that have played, you know, a thousand hands of cards, uh, you know, they're worn in and they're a lot easier to build a card house with. So if you have a new deck, this is how you can artificially wear them down. You just take your rock and you just sort of scrape it along the surface. And what you do is you roughen up that edge, which gives it more friction, which makes making this apex a lot easier because building the, the bottom layer on a rough surface like my table or on the carpet is easy because there's a lot of friction there. Now the other thing you can do is you can dog ear the top and the bottom of the card. And what do I mean by dog ear? Here, check, check it out. I've got some mock cards that I've made here. These say, say these are new cards, right? And the edges are perfectly straight and flat. And you see that? And so when you do that, when you stick them up against each other, there's nothing really to catch on to, and it's very difficult to get them to, to lean up against each other. But after cards have been used a lot, they start to get these edges that are all sort of frayed and bending and kind of curling over, which is what you call dog ear or worn or um, however you want to call it. And uh, this allows the cards to sit up against each other really easy. And so that's, you know, I say it's a microscopic uh, version. So what you want to do, camera one, what you want to do is you want to take your rock and put the whole deck together. You don't want to do this one card at a time. And you just want to bang on the top of your deck of cards. And what that'll do is that'll just start wearing the edges out. It doesn't really damage the cards, it just makes them look like they've played a lot of cards, like, like it's a really old deck of cards. And it helps because it bends the edges over, which makes it easier for them to stack up against each other in an apex. And that's how you build triangular card houses using triangles. It's still not easy, but it does make it easier. Now, camera three. Here's what you can do if you wanna build triangular card houses. You can go in a circle, like that, 
and you can build lots of layers like that or you can even build out like this you it's hard to see there here I'll, I'll show you what that is camera one there we go so I've got some other cards here that I've um, taped together to make it faster because this is live so I've used some science tape uh, to tape the cards together but just to make it easier for you to understand uh, the pattern here so what you do is you put your two apexes like this and you put your roof on it like normal but then you instead of going along in a, in a line sideways you turn the next apex perpendicular and you put another one here like this and you put a roof on that like this and then let's maybe maybe we'll go to camera maybe we'll go to camera four camera four can you see that on camera four hi hi camera four what's going on okay so um, you're basically going along it's kind of off center on camera four but maybe you can see then you make another apex there and another apex here And you put a roof on it. And can you see what I'm doing? I'm making a larger, I'm making a larger base. Here, let's go back to camera one. There you go. I'm making a larger base. Then you go around again on this side, there and there. And it helps you build a tower of cards because you can make a big wide base and then you can start building more apexes on the next level up and so anyway you get the idea so that is one way to build a card house it's really uh it's a really fun thing to do but it's also very difficult to do now the other way that i know jacks knows how to do is the four card cell uh which is another way to make a big wide base and go up from there because that's better science if you want to build something really solid so here's how you do that um I will try to show you again. It's not super easy. It's a lot easier on carpet than it is on a table. Um, but let me show you here. What would be the best camera? Maybe we'll go to camera four. What do you think? Here we go. Camera four. Uh, you take your cards, you lie them on their sides and you lean the cards against each other. And this card leans against the middle of that card. And then you put this card into the middle of that card and you lean it up. And then it's really tricky until you get that fourth card in there. You get that fourth card in there and it makes a nice little box see there you go four card cell it makes a cell inside and now what you can do is you can just start expanding on that by putting cards lie them up at the middle of the card and here's another one here and then i can put one here and here And then when you put a roof on it, you can actually make a pretty wide structure. Whoa. And the trick here is to overhang your roof and make it larger than the cell on the inside. And then you can build it all again, the same size and go up even higher. There we go. Back to camera one. There you go. So that's another way to build a card house. And if you do that, camera three, whoops, no, wait, that's not camera three, camera three. There we go. If you do that, you can build something that looks like this or something that looks like, like this. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay. Camera one. Thank you, Jax, for that question. If you have a really awesome science question to ask me, well, please do. Just click the link below and that will take you to the awesome science question hub. What is it? It's probably just Facebook, but you know, you never know. It could be like, you know, in the future I could create some, you know, really elaborate website, but yeah, it's probably just Facebook for the time being. Ask me some cool questions, hit like and subscribe. And in the meantime, stay curious.